CPJ is effective to go someplace and talk to the prime minister or the president or the justice minister and say, you need to let these people free. You put them in jail because you want to shut them up. Well, you can't shut us up. Breaking news, you are going to be uh, seeing some video here that we have just coming Tens in. Tens of thousands of protesters are calling for government reform. The growing crackdown in Europe and Italy, one of the deadliest days yet. And they are already at 100% ICU capacity. Protesters have taken to the streets around the world to protest against racism and discrimination. As police crack down on the protests, journalists have also found themselves being targeted. Local as well as foreign journalists have often been in the thick of it. Move, move, move. We've seen journalists being arrested. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Why I'm under arrest? Targets with tear gas. Throwing straight at me. Why we're under attack? And being hit with batons and shields. Despite it being very clear that they are journalists. In recent weeks, being a journalist does not make you immune to being uh, harassed by police. Abuses against the media are getting worse. Over the last week, they've arrested dozens of journalists. The costs of being a journalist add up when you're in countries that don't respect press freedom, and that's exactly where CPJ steps in. Freedom of the press is the foundation of every single right you have. We are not ending this fight. They're aiming their fire now. Even in the face of danger, journalists continue to place their lives on the line to bring the unheard stories from the darkest parts of the world. You could not have been more professional. You were doing your job by the book. I know they've been through a lot and they are very strong, tough, fierce journalists. I can hear Gwen right now saying to each one of us, keep your head down, keep working. Now is not the time to grow weary. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for the 2020 International Press Freedom Awards presented by the Committee to Protect Journalists. The powerful video that we just saw is the reason we're here. Whether covering the pandemic or protests, Journalists everywhere are under attack. The very truth they seek to bring us is under attack. And shortly we're going to meet some of the brave reporters that we just saw and learn how we can support a free press. And to guide us there, it's my pleasure to introduce Committee to Protect Journalists board member and anchor of the NBC Nightly News and Dateline NBC, Lester Holt. Hi everyone, I'm Lester Holt. Every year, the Committee to Protect Journalists, on whose board I am proud to serve, honors courageous journalists from around the world at this event. For nearly 40 years, the Committee to Protect Journalists has stood shoulder to shoulder with reporters around the globe who brave violence and intimidation just for bringing us the news. And I doubt that the Committee has ever been more needed than right now. What a time we're living through. Rarely in our lifetimes has the need for accurate and timely information been greater. We are awash with misinformation and lies. The pandemic has emboldened autocrats everywhere to crack down on dissent and civil liberties. In democratic countries, leaders have undermined their own institutions and health experts in their attempt to downplay the crisis. Independent journalism is a bulwark against this erosion of freedom and slide into confusion. Journalists around the globe have taken up the challenge to keep citizens informed, sometimes at the price of their own freedom. Such sacrifice is a common theme at these CPJ Awards. This year is no exception. Tonight we will hear from an international community of journalists, news reporters, familiar faces, and surprising guests who have all gathered to honor the work of four journalists from Russia, Nigeria, Iran, and Bangladesh, who have paid a heavy price for their quest after the truth. I am honored to be here and welcome you to join us in this fight for press freedom. Hi. I'm Patrick Gaspard, president of the Open Society Foundations. I am honored to be the chair of this year's International Press Freedom Awards. For three decades, these awards have focused attention 
on the struggles of independent reporters and editors around the world. They recognize courage and professionalism in the face of cruel oppression. They also give encouragement to those journalists in jail or in exile for their work. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us all what a world without accurate information can look like. So many people have suffered. So many people have died, in part because those in power manipulated or bungled the flow of information. We need skeptics and people who ask tough questions to hold our leaders to account. That means we need journalists, and journalists need protection. I am supporting the Committee to Protect Journalists. Join me. Hello from London. Now, U.S. sanctions have crippled Iran's access to medical supplies, but still the country has been scrambling to cover up the extent and impact of COVID-19 on the country. At one point, it even suspended the printing and distribution of all newspapers. Despite intimidation and the ever-present threat of ending up in Tehran's notorious Evin prison, independent journalists have persisted in bringing us the truth. One such is our next honoree, a dogged investigative reporter who has just this year been sentenced to nearly five years in prison. Here's Mohammed Mossad. are scarce pictures from protests in Iran. The Iranian government has shut down nearly all internet access in the country. There are pockets of access that have let people show what's happening on the ground, but they're rare. Making it very hard to figure out what exactly is going on there with the protests. The situation of press freedom in Iran, there is no press freedom. Everything is state run. Whoever is not happy with what you report as a journalist, their first measure is to silence you. You always have to watch your back, always have to watch your communications. Mohammed was arrested in the middle of nationwide street protests. This tweet is one of the reasons he was arrested. He was detained for over a month all of it, he was in solitary confinement. Helping these journalists like Mohammed has become personal for me. I am an Iranian journalist. I was detained for over two and a half months in solitary confinement. It's like being alive, but forced into a grave. Me and my colleagues at the Committee to Protect Journalists got involved with Mohammed's case. We immediately put statements out and launching a social media campaign on his behalf. On August 25th, Mohammed received his final sentence. he got such a heavy sentence is because of his effort to tell the truth. It's because of these journalists on the ground that we sometimes hear, oh, there was a flood, there is a war, there is a pandemic. We know that there are forces in the system who do not want the truth to be shared with the outside world. He's being punished only for being a very truthful journalist. The four journalists whose stories we're hearing 
give us a glimpse into the battle for press freedom. In honoring their struggle and their sacrifice, we send a signal of hope and solidarity to the thousands of other journalists who endure attacks, the loss of livelihood, the loss of liberty, and sometimes even the loss of life that comes with being an independent voice in so much of the world. Their reporting has brought light into these dark times. Tyrants love the dark. It cloaks their misdeeds and their lies. By supporting CPJ, you are also helping journalists everywhere bring us the light of truth. Congratulations to all of the honorees. As usual at this event, it's an amazing and courageous group of women and men. For more than 30 years, Knight Foundation has supported the Committee to Protect Journalists because press freedom is the lifeblood of citizen engagement in any republic. Around the world, there simply isn't a more effective organization supporting a free press, especially in a crisis. We're proud of our significant investment in CPJ, including our most recent grant, $4 million, for their headquarters and endowment. I'm here to ask you for your support. Every dollar you give as part of this event will be matched dollar for dollar by Knight Foundation. So if you give $50, it'll be $100. If you give $1,000, it'll be $2,000. Give any amount, but please give. If you're moved by the courage and tenacity of the honorees, give. If you believe in informed communities and accountable government, you should give. Knight Foundation will double your gift and we're delighted to do so. Thank you. Independent journalism in Nigeria today owes a debt of gratitude to our next awardee who began fighting for a free press back in the 1990s. His Tempo magazine angered that country's military dictatorship so much that it issued a shoot on sight order against him after he was forced into hiding to escape arrest in 1995. He survived. The dictator fell. Since then, he has continued that fight for press freedom, all the while working as a prolific journalist and founder of news sites. It is my great pleasure to introduce the man sometimes known as the godfather of online journalism in Nigeria, Dabo Olurunyomi. We have political institutions that do not believe in the idea of press freedom. Freedom of the press is purely theoretical in Nigeria. A journalist is a moving target. Journalists in Nigeria work under very difficult conditions. For societies like us, the press is the only hope for the possibility of an opposition. 1996, they put us on charges of treason. My colleague said, listen, you, you, you really have to leave the country at this time. CPJ and the Amnesty International collaborated and got me out of Nigeria. It's not part of the plan, but it's like, today you have to move. That's how a 13 years exile began. <laughs> so, my years of exile was working to free many of my colleagues who were in jail, providing media support for the kinds of work that they do. So I said, OK, let's try to do something. We'll publish online. And that's how Premium Times was founded. Dakbo Onoriyomi has fought not just for democracy, but for press freedom, especially in Nigeria. The advent of Premium Times changed online journalism in this country. We are the only Nigerian newspaper invited to be part of the Panama Papers. 2017, we had written a story about the head of the Nigerian army. I was arrested alongside Dr. Lonriomi when I did a report which the chief of army staff at the time did not find so comfortable. The Committee to Protect Journalists quickly jumped in 
In fact, it was one of the biggest cases of advocacy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Ordinarily, I know we'll probably have rocks in jail, <laughs> but I mean, they were forced to release us, you know, the very next day. You can't stop media from doing its work. That work is clearly established in Section 22 of the Nigerian Constitution to hold people in power accountable at all times. That's what the law says. My own relationship with the community to protect journalists is a very long one. Just hearing that people are making calls, I'm putting pressure for your release. That keeps you going. The Elvin, how you doing? <laughs> One's hope is that we'll be able to design new ways to fund accountability journalism in the country. This is the central challenge for press freedom, I think, in Nigeria. Our world is changing faster than ever. Every morning, we wake up to news of protests, natural disasters, police brutality, fake news, a global pandemic, the world ending. To navigate this world, we need information. And we depend on a free press to bring it to us. We need to know the truth. Because truth means freedom. Freedom from censorship. Freedom from tyranny. Freedom from oppression. From corrupt governments. Freedom from misinformation. From the abuse of power. From lies. But this freedom can only happen in a world when freedom of speech and a free press is protected. For me, a free press guarantees the freedom to make jokes, to have an opinion, speak truth to power, seek the truth, protest, to write a story, to make art, to criticize and contextualize the facts, to speak out, fight back, and stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up for what is right. Join us and donate to the Committee to Protect Journalists. Let's all fight for a free press. Russia knows how to silence critics. Political opponents often keel over from poison. Independent journalists are often stifled through intimidation. Harassment short of detention or physical attack does not make for screaming international headlines. And for that reason, it's probably even more effective. The court system is a favorite tool of the Kremlin for oppression. Prosecution after bogus prosecution can crush the life out of a reporter. Here is one journalist who refuses to let that happen, Svetlana Prokopievia. Вот когда атмосферы в атмосфере кислорода, содержание кислорода в атмосфере снижается, но когда постепенно снижает, то как бы вроде ничего. Ты продолжаешь жить, ходить, есть, пить. Блять, а потом падаешь замертво, потому что дышать нечего. Вот со свободой слова примерно так же. Когда она есть, ты ее не замечаешь. Но когда ты вдруг оказываешься в атмосфере, когда ты не можешь ничего сказать, вот в этот момент ты понимаешь, что свобода слова необходима. Светлана Прокопьева is a journalist who works for Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, and she also worked for a liberal radio station, Echo of Moscow. She got in trouble for the comments she made in the broadcast on a terrorist attack. Вот это все было сочтено оправданием терроризма. Шел следователи высоким. Но они уже здесь, и они роются в моих вещах, и они забирают все мои ноутбуки. In Russia, you don't have to be a well-known, outspoken journalist, a critic of President Putin himself to be prosecuted for your opinion. We immediately jumped on the case. We spoke to Svetlana. We issued an alert. And the Russian journalistic community demonstrated solidarity in defending Svetlana. Over a dozen protesters, many of them journalists, were detained by the police in Moscow on Friday. 
вот эта журналистская солидарность делает нашу проблему видимой, слышимой и значимой. Потому что у нас вообще-то как бы все инструменты для этого ну, в руках. Вставить эту проблему перед лицом всего общества, говорить, вот, смотрите, вот она, вот она. Она важна поэтому. The court did find her guilty of justifying terrorism. But fortunately, she wasn't sentenced to a jail term. She ended up with a huge fine, and uh, she is still under the travel ban. Svetlana's case was a case where freedom of expression and press freedom was put on trial. If we at the Committee to Protect Journalists don't help those journalists, don't speak out, in defense of them, who else is going to do it? My name is Kathleen Carroll, advocate for press freedom and board chair of the Committee to Protect Journalists. Today, you don't need to be a professional journalist to report the news. Today, 280 characters can carry a message that will be heard around the world. A video taken by your cell phone can bear witness to actions that might otherwise be erased. The internet can be a platform for people to speak loudly, even when governments try to silence them. But today, those very tools have ushered in a new era of propaganda. It is more difficult than ever to decipher what is real and what is not. Join me in defending our access to facts. Join me in celebrating brave and accurate reporting because press freedom is not just about protecting journalists. It's about your right to share your story and engage the world. Press freedom is your freedom. We all know that at its heart, journalism is about storytelling, and our next award winner is a master of the craft in words, and even more so in pictures. For more than three decades, his photographs of his native Bangladesh have provided powerful insights into the social and political upheaval in his country. His brave reporting led to his detention two years ago. Freed on bail after four months, a legal case against him remains open, but no government has been able to shut down one of Bangladesh's great photojournalists. Shahidu Alala. We live in a very visual world. We are constantly immersed in images. We are told how to think by other people who use images to direct our minds. For a photojournalist, our need is to tell the story. Our need is to ensure the message goes out. We have to be at the forefront, and therefore we are perceived as the biggest threat. Well, joining us now via Skype from Dhaka is Shahidul Alam. He is a photographer and social activist. I think the government has miscalculated. It certainly felt that fear was enough, repression would have been enough, but you cannot tame an entire nation in this manner. I'd just given this interview to Al Jazeera. I was uploading my pictures, and the doorbell rang. Shahidul Allah has been arrested. Charged with spreading false information about recent student protests. On August 5th, 2018, I got messages from my sources in Bangladesh saying that Shahidul's been detained. The moment the Committee to Protect Journalists heard, we knew we had to get to work right away. We help his family organize a protest outside of the UN General Assembly to put pressure on the Bangladeshi government. There was a massive coalition in Bangladesh as well that was coordinating information. I don't know that the government really knew the amount of backlash they would face. It was immediate. I was tortured, I went to jail, and there were times when I thought I might not live. I was finally released on the 20th of November, around 107 days after I was picked up. 
it's not an individual effort, it's a community effort. We are dependent on journalists standing up in solidarity, others who are willing to fight this fight along with us because there's power in numbers. It was very, very important that spotlight was not a spotlight just in me, but a spotlight on Bangladesh, a spotlight on repression. And I felt then, as I do now, that if we can continue that resistance and if that support continues, we have a chance of righting a wrong. The journalists we have just met, Svetlana, Depo, Mohammed, and Shaido, are exceptional. And unfortunately, their stories are typical of the hundreds of journalists that CPJ supports each year. CPJ's dedicated staff report on attacks on the press and mount campaigns and advocacy in defense of the press. This all under the leadership of our next speaker, the executive director of CPJ, Joel Simon. Smartphones have made it possible for people around the world to document what they see and to say what they think. We are all journalists, if you will. We all have the same rights, whether guaranteed in the First Amendment or in international law. But we still need the professionals who go out every day and take the risks, ask the hard questions, gather the facts. We want to be informed. We want to be connected. We want to be heard. But there are risks for those who challenge power and who dare to tell the truth. We, at the Committee to Protect Journalists, are proud to stand up and defend the rights of the journalists who keep us informed. We're active in every place journalists are under threat. It takes money to run that kind of global operation. That's why I want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who gave because they were inspired by our honorees. Thank you to those who support CPJ year after year. Thank you to the foundations and philanthropies whose grants underwrite our work. Thank you to everyone who cares about press freedom, who values and supports the work of journalists, and who speaks out when press freedom is under threat. Thank you. And thank you to Meryl Streep, who will now introduce the Gwen Ifill Press Freedom Award winner, Amal Clooney. The late Gwen Ifill, a beloved reporter who anchored the PBS Evening News, once said, we cannot expect the world to get better by itself. We have to create something. We can leave the next generation. Gwen died four years ago, and through her defense of press freedom, she has left us a legacy which we can carry forward. Gwen was a supporter and longtime board member of the Committee to Protect Journalists, which has named an award in her honor. The Gwen Ifill Award is given every year for extraordinary and sustained achievement in the cause of press freedom. This evening's award is presented to a woman who exemplifies the tireless struggle for press freedom and justice. And she's not only something every journalist needs, which is a great lawyer, but she's also a defender of the international laws that make free expression possible. Tonight, we honor her work to ensure that governments and tyrants are made accountable for their unprecedented attacks on press freedom. It's my great honor to announce Amal Clooney as the 2020 recipient of the Gwen Ifill Award. Amal brings her skill as an advocate and her expertise in international human rights law to help free journalists who are unjustly imprisoned and to protect those who face such imprisonment. We're facing a free speech crisis in the world today, and it's extremely concerning. Record numbers of journalists are being abused across the world through vilification, threats, surveillance, imprisonment, even murder. She has defended journalists around the world and helped win their freedom. Among them, Mohammed Fahmy, an Al Jazeera journalist, investigative reporter Khadija Ismailova, jailed in Azerbaijan, and in Myanmar, Reuters journalists Walong and Cha Sou U. 
Amal has represented clients before courts such as the International Criminal Court and the European Court of Human Rights. Her organization, the Clooney Foundation for Justice, monitors press freedom violations and provides free legal representation for those in greatest need. It is time to make justice your priority so that history can record what happened, so that we can stop it from happening again. I am so honored to be able to, to call the winner of the 2020 Gwen Ifill Press Freedom Award, not only a dear friend, but somebody who has enabled us here in Rappler in the Philippines to actually do our work and someone who I hope will continue doing that work so that we stay out of jail. Um, we are halfway around the world from each other, but please join us in this conversation with Amal Clooney. Amal, it is so good to see you. Hello, Maria. It's so good to see you as well. I wish we could be in the same room, but this will have to do for now. Thank you, CPJ, for giving me the chance to ask her questions <laughs> instead of her grilling me. To prepare for this, I looked at everything you did in your life and, you know, very, very <laughs> oh, impressive Oxford University, NYU Law, a professor at Columbia Law School. Uh, but the crucial question, why do you do what you do? I think one of the reasons I do it is uh, because I know how lucky I am. I, you know, I was born in Lebanon uh, at a time when that country was going through a civil war and I was lucky enough, my family was able to leave the country and we moved to the UK as refugees and from there anything was possible. Uh, but I think another part of it though is frankly um, anger. I think anger drives a lot of what I do because um, when I read about what's happening in many places in the world, I just feel a sense of outrage uh, that those in power are abusing their power. Today in 2020, I see in far too many places the those who are committing human rights abuses are free and those who are reporting on them are imprisoned. And I will continue to focus on trying to tackle both <laughs> problems. Um, you know, uh, and I thank you for being so determined to continue the work that you do. Oh, no, I mean, thank you for that. I, and it, and we are so much better because you do what you do, right? But when you're facing such seemingly hopeless cases, where does Amal, where does hope come from for you? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I would ask you the same question. I, it, it never occurs to me to do otherwise. Um, I suppose it's more, um, it, it, it's that that's the default. And I think actually the worse the situation gets, you know, you asked me why I had to focus on journalists. I didn't start my career thinking I'm going to focus on cases involving journalists. I, I decided to focus my career on cases involving human rights. And you can't defend human rights if journalists can't do their work. You can't defend democracy if you don't have a thriving and independent media. But the more I see autocratic regimes becoming determined to silence those who disagree with them, to silence those who expose the truth or corruption or, or things that embarrass them, the more determined we have to be. You know, they're becoming more creative in their methods. Um, and so we need to become um, more savvy in our response. And so I think journalists have a part to play. Lawyers have a part to play. Yeah. Senators have a part to play. My name means hope. So I'm, I'm destined to be an optimist. <laughs> So Amal, tonight you are getting uh, the Committee to Protect Journalists, their Gwen Ifill Press Freedom Award. What does this mean to you? Well, I feel so honored um, to get this award. The Committee to Protect Journalists does incredible work. Uh, I couldn't do my work without them. I rely on their data. I, you know, I, I brainstorm with them and they are um, really professional and, and really devoted. And so, you know, I think we both feel very strongly that uh, journalism is the lifeblood of democracy and that this is, you know, something we have to continue to fight for. Uh, I know how powerful a defender you are and we in Rappler are just so lucky to have you on our side. Your taking my case helps give me the courage to do what we're doing to continue standing up to power because I know that you know god forbid if something happens and I tell you this all the time I know you're there what kind of pressure does that put on you 
Well, I, I do feel pressure um, when I work on cases like yours. Um, and I, sh you know, to some degree, your case does keep me up at night. And, and so it should, because you might be the one in the dock, but it's actually democracy that's on trial. If, if you can be taken away and handcuffed and silenced, then every other journalist in the country knows what they need to do to stay safe. It's not a fair contest. You know, you have the truth on your side, but um, your uh, foe is the most powerful person in the country. <laughs> and the, you know, the other side of this case is the government that controls the police and controls the army and controls the prosecutors and potentially controls the courts. So I think we are asking a lot of journalists. Um, you know, I think you're incredibly courageous, but you shouldn't need to be this courageous. It's too much to ask. It's too much pressure on people like you. And I think that's why the system has to change. Most people may not realize your mom was, uh, is a, a journalist, right? Uh, how has this affected you? What has she done? How has her work affected you? Well, I mean, I definitely um, watched her admiringly. Uh, you know, she was a journalist initially in Lebanon and then um, a foreign correspondent based in the UK. But I grew up sort of watching her rushing to finish her, her columns. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's, it's in the family. My husband's father is also a veteran journalist and it's definitely something close to both of our hearts. Um, it's, it's in our families and, and it means that it's, uh, it's difficult to get a word in edgeways at our family dinner tables. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Amal Clooney, Amal Hope, and, you know, really a fuel for courage for us to keep doing what we do. Thank you so much. Maria, thank you. And it was a pleasure. Thank you for joining us in honoring these courageous journalists across the globe. Please continue to support the Committee to Protect Journalists and rally for our collective fight for press freedom. To end the night, please enjoy a final musical performance. Take care, everyone, and good night. Hi, my name is Lee Ronaldo. This song is called Thrown Over the Wall. The lyrics were co-written with author Jonathan Lethem, based on words ripped directly from the headlines. Let's remember that there are journalists like tonight's honorees who are willing to risk their lives or go to jail to bring us the news. This song is for them. our faces with names We use the night to conceal our dreams And clouds to hide our aeroplanes We smuggle facts inside a magazine Interpret sadness as shame. Swung high the hammer to teach them to believe. Bury the lead behind the frame. Thrown over the wall, thrown over. Clouds to 
Oh.